Hi everyone, this is Mike with Play More Games, and today we're going to be unboxing Napoleon's Imperium, the latest release from Compass Games, and I am very excited to take a look at it. So, this game, um, I read a little bit about it. Um, apparently, this game has been around in uh, tabletop form for a while, um, but this is its first uh, published uh, release, to my understanding, anyway. So this is published by Compass Games, and if we take a look, we can see that it was published, uh, or developed in partnership with the Australian Design Group, game designer Andrew Rowland, uh, graphic design Vlad Staniscu. Um, so I really uh, enjoy Napoleonics. Um, but when I saw, you know, that it was designed by Andrew Rowland and uh, ADG, I was very excited because I have spent maybe the last three to four months learning uh, World in Flames, which I enjoy a lot. And if you follow me on Twitter, you've seen um, I've been uh, clipping some of the counters so I can play Fatal Alliances. And uh, I certainly understand that that's not, that, that, that's not like this game you know, the Napoleonic uh, version of that, but, you know, I am excited to play something else from them, because those are uh, two games that I enjoy very much. So, this is a two to eight player game, and I think it covers, like, 1805 to 1815, and it is... Uh, a pretty exciting production so um, without further ado I'll get this flipped over and we'll start uh, unwrapping this and see we'll see what's inside all right now that we got the plastic off let's pop the box and uh, we'll see what's in it okay so we are greeted by uh, tons and tons of dice and cards woohoo we're already off to a great start so we have three six 9, 10, uh, 10, uh, these 8, these are 8, no they're 10, 10 red 10 sided dice, and 10 blue 10 sided dice, so uh, coalition and uh, French and her allies, uh, we have a deck of cards, uh, captured capital cards, Captured Commander cards. Quite a few. Over here, we have... These look like some sort of... Uh, battle cards. I know that these are sorted into... Decks for each of the factions. And I know that's how a little bit of the... Uh, chrome and differentness of the factions come out. See, Napoleon crosses the Alps and defeats the Austrian army in the Battle of Marengo, 1800. Interesting. And then over here we have more battle cards. This is the backs for the Spanish. Syrian Sandstorm. Interesting. Okay. So, looks like we have... Uh, looks like some errata and clarifications. Uh, Compass is usually, they're usually pretty good about, uh, you know, proofing anything before they uh, get it out to you. So a lot of times you'll see, you'll see, you'll open and you'll see a stack of papers. So like if you go back and look at, um, um, the lamps are going out. It's got all of the errata in it. It's pretty minimal. Um, just looking at this, minor spelling errors, clarifications. Looks pretty uh, minimal. All right. Next up, we have our rule book. And let's see back here. 30 years of game design development from 1990 to 2020. 
Well, let me tell you what I was doing in 1990. Uh, uh, nothing. I was not yet with us. Uh, so it's interesting to see a game that uh, has been around in one form or another for so long. I think if I read correctly, it was, uh, yeah, here. The game was also utilized as a powerful corporate training tool for team building. Um, I've had a lot of corporate trainings in my day, but nothing nothing quite uh, as fun as this. Um, so let's take a look at the rule book. Um, it's nice, large print, lots of color. Um, let's see, yeah. Fairly detailed. We have charts at the end. Nice to uh, to have scorecards, index, uh, special acknowledgments, all this good stuff here. An inventory checklist. So, pretty standard stuff. We're at about 30 pages, but again, that includes index, forwards, notes, examples. Um, all right. So let's. Do this. So this is uh, turn track and weather chart, and it looks like maybe you could put uh, draw decks on this. Uh, here we have faction cards. So we have our eight factions. We have the Ottomans, the Austrians, uh, the French, the Prussians, the Spanish, and the Nordics, the Russians, the Brits. Okay, And if you look at these, um, you can see that, okay, so, the Ottomans and the Austrians have different uh, fleet avoid rates. They have different uh, fleet movement speeds and army movement speeds. Um, I know that this is one of the ways that they, uh, you know, get the differences in the empires uh, into the game without a ton of chrome and extra rules. That and the, the cards. Uh, so let's take a look at some of the player aids here. We have a territory chart, and on this, it shows the territory, and it gives values for infantry, cavalry, artillery, ports, and fleets. Um, I'm not sure if that's like a maximum capacity, or what values you get from each. It'll be interesting to find out. So this is the French team. It's going to be France, Spain, Austria, and the Ottomans. And over here, we have the Brits, the Prussians, the Nordic States, and the Russians. Now I know that these are fixed sides, and I know that that is, I know that that has been something that um, the developer addressed. And uh, on the back here is rules and special ability summary. Um, that's something that the designer addressed online. I saw a post on Board Game Geek, and I don't want to put, you know, words into anyone's mouth here. But um, if you are, you know, concerned about that, this is, you know, a game that covers from 1805 to 1815, and there are, you know, um, there's a lot that happens between 1805 and 1815. Let me, uh, I'm gonna grab. Uh, the maps here. Or actually, let's take a look at the counters first. There's a lot of territory that changes hands. There's a lot of alliances that changing, you know. So, you know. Yeah. So there's a lot that changes over that 10-year period that, like, 
if you wanted to make a game on it, and there are games on it, like War and Peace, Nations in Arms, Napoleon Against Europe, um, to a lesser extent, I'm less familiar with that game. You would either need to make a bunch of scenarios, or have it so laden with Chrome um, that it becomes a different game entirely. And not, you know, not necessarily an unenjoyable game. You know, that's why you have games like War and Peace, um, Nations in Arms, that, you know, cover those kinds of things. But that's not what this game is. So, uh, so here we have the, the Russians. And these are the Compass New Counters, so you can see that they're already falling out. So, yeah. <laughs> um... The Nordics, the Prussians, yeah, and all our counters are falling apart here. Uh, yeah, so I would say uh, do not unbox these until you are ready. Yeah, because they are just falling right off. Yes. Okay. Um, let's see if we can get a closer look at some of our French here. So, we have, oh, I don't know here, I'm going to say attack, defense, movement, although that could be morale. Um, yeah, uh, let's take a look at the, the backs. Uh, looks to be about the same, so. All right. I'm going to put away the counters, and then we're going to take a look at the map. Alright, so before we looked at the maps, I did want to just take a look at the cards here. I have them all laid out. So, these are battle point cards, which I'm not really sure how that works, but uh, this says successful land defense. It's double-sided. It gives you 10 battle points, or is worth 10 battle points. Actually, I think that's how uh, how scores are tabulated. So you might take these to track what's going on. Spy death, sea victory, captured commander, captured capital. And then over here, we have some of the battle cards. So here are the Austrians. We'll just flip one over here. Brits, Battle of Trafalgar, the French, Battle of Friedland, and so on. We have the Nordics, the Ottomans, the Prussians, the Russians, and the Spanish. So these are fairly thick stacks, and nice cards, nice artwork, nice flavor text, clear and simple instructions, right? So, uh, minus one infantry, British take Nordic fleet and place it at Portsmouth. Yep, pretty straightforward. Um, plus 10 economic points to an next purchase. Interesting. Alright, so um, now, we've taken a look at the cards, let's get a look at the map. Alright, and now, a look at the map. So here is a high-level overview of the map of Napoleon's Imperium. You can see each of the factions are shaded. Um, again, color-coded like their battle cards and their pieces. So you don't have to be uh, a master of Napoleonics to understand who's on whose side, um, what the factions are, what the pieces are, everything like that. So it's uh, two map sheets, two standard size map sheets uh, pushed together, so it is definitely on the larger side, especially when you know you consider you have to have room for all the cards and the sheets and all that, the turn track. Uh, so let's take a little bit of a closer look. And we'll start with England. So we have a, a nice, uh, we have England. You can see the 
the uh, wheels, um, ship's wheels. Uh, I'm going to guess that those are probably port markers. If we go down, we see uh, Portugal in the same color, uh, the Spanish, uh, obviously the French. Over here we have Austria and the Prussians. Up here we have the Nordics, Denmark, Norway, and Sweden. Sweden. I think Finland, Holland, and the Helvetic Republic. I think those might be like neutrals. Um, or actually, those are kind of the same shade as the. Uh, Italian provinces here. Um, over here we have the Ottoman territory. We have a nice uh, touch of the pyramids of Egypt. We have the camels. The Ottomans get special camel units. We have uh, uh, Crete, Aracline. We've been there recently in our playthroughs of uh, GTS. And then over here we have the great expanse of Russia. So, very cool. And along the outside you have um, a spot for your battle cards, uh, your purchase tray. Uh, so, I'm guessing that means like a force pool. And then you have information records around the outside in everyone's uh, color. So it's a very pretty map um, but it's also very uh, user-friendly too. There's not a lot of information on here and that's not to say I mean that's only to say that you can look at it and at a, at a glance have a pretty good idea of what's going on, right? You have the color, you have number values, we have port symbols, we have capital city symbols, and that's about it. Um, so, very easy to understand. So, let me uh, box this all up and uh, we'll do a short little wrap up. All right, that is our look at Napoleon's Imperium. I hope you enjoyed. Um, something I'm definitely looking forward to playing. Uh, I think this would be really nice to take down um, obviously conditions permitting to like your local game club or your face-to-face -face group um, and get a whole bunch of people playing it. Uh, am I worried about you know being able to solo it effectively? Not really. Um, yes there are eight factions but you could play this as a two-player game very easily. And I think if you can play a game uh, without uh, any hidden information easily two-player, um, yeah, then you could definitely do it one-player. So I'm looking forward to giving it a try. Um, and uh, yeah, like I said, hopefully once uh, things are more normal-like, uh, getting a group together and playing this, because I do think it would be, even if you just do like a, a one or two-year scenario, um, it does look like it would be a lot of fun. So, thanks for checking this out. This is Mike with Play More Games, and uh, happy gaming. Bye.